Well, this is a magnificent beast here. This is a Martin Ruggieri model, five string. Uh, we've made it for the most uh, lovely young player. He's, uh, I think he's always wanted a Martin bass and so he's uh, now finally got one and a beautiful one it is, absolutely magnificent. So our Ruggieri model is our take on a double bass made by Vincenzo Ruggieri in Cremona which would have been at the end of the 17th century. So it's a very, very early model and actually quite a modern sort of shape. Um, so, you know, basses at that time quite often were very small or very big or cello shaped, but actually this is a very normal shaped instrument. The original, uh, which, you know, this is the original outline of it, but we've sort of, you know, tweaked the sound holes and changed those, we've given it a round back and it's kind of become its own model uh, under us, but, the inspiration was from that original, uh, that original bass, the, the Vincenzo Ruggieri. And although it's a very big instrument, it's actually super playable. So lovely sloping shoulder, really nice big distance from here to here. You know, thumb position's just there, I've not even moved. You know, it's, it's a real orchestral beast, but also um, it's a, you know, it's still a very playable bass, solo bass, audition bass, makes a great five stringer. We also do a vial model, if you prefer the vial shaped, you know, for German bone, whatever. So we made this a five string, and um, I don't know, if, you, if you've seen some of our stuff, that information we put out about five string basses, then um, one of the things that we do is make them so they really feel as easy to play as possible. Some people, when they produce a five string, especially in years gone by, uh, you know, everything was massive. So really wide fingerboard, extra big everything, and um, you know, extra like twice as thick front and everything else. It's actually, if, if it's well designed, a five string can be, you know, not feel much different than a four. So we actually have put a very slightly wider fingerboard. You'll notice here when we do our setup, we almost hang the string off the edge. So it's, because as you put your hand down, you actually pull it, if you see I'm actually pulling it that way, as I stop the string. So therefore, you can have this, there's, there's, no, there's no need for there particularly to be a lot of fingerboard under here, because as soon as you play it, and you're probably not going to play a lot higher than that, is that you've, you're actually pulling it across. So that's allowed us to have a narrower fingerboard, making it a lot more comfortable. We've also done a big overstand here, and a big high bridge, and that gets you further away from the bass if you're playing with a German bow, the further away you are, the less likely you are to bump into the corner. Same with the French bow, uh, but obviously less of an issue. But and also the big overstand puts less tension on the front, allows it to speak very well, etc. So there's, I think there will be some other videos about five string basses and, and overstand and things like that available if you're interested. Um, yeah, but this particular one, so it's got the most magnificent front. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's incredible. See all these stripes. I mean, it looks like it's been attacked by a bear like, you know, scratching it. Um, that's what they actually call this. There's, there's sort of several things they call this. It's mascatura figure is like the fancy violin word for it. Um, you know, flamed, uh, flamed spruce or bear claw is another thing people call it, but it kind of looks like these little worms. And that's like having really highly figured wood, but for the, for the wood of a front. Normally, you know, in, on, with maple and stuff or on the back and sides, it's when it's stripy, that's what we would call figure and flames. Uh, and actually this is just the same, but on the front of the base. Um, so it looks like super nice, really, really uh, beautiful wood. I mean, you couldn't get better tone wood than that. Lovely big arch, big uh, deep dished Panormo style rim. That's very sort of a trademark on our instruments. Um, and so let's have a look at the rest of it. Well, you are in for a treat. Look at that, absolutely magnificent wood. I mean, you just can't get better than that. Bosnian flame maple from our wood store. Um, again, beautiful edge work we do. You know, the lads do in the workshop or the team does. Um, gorgeous varnish done by Dan. Uh, this is our sort of antique finish with a sort of more satin finish on it. You can see it's not too shiny. Often in the lights, you know, these things can be, you know, quite shiny. This is our new sort of slightly less bright varnish. Um, magnificent, it really is, you know, what a beautiful thing. Um, and um, the young chap we've made it for, you know, what a, what a great instrument to, 
sort of make his future with music. You know, fabulous, really nice. Um, same with the same with the head. You know, lovely flamed maple, um, English style Baker machine heads. Beautiful antiquing. Um, yeah, I mean, this is honestly just such a beautiful instrument, and it's so nice um, when we see them finished like this. Um, and and you know, it's just yeah. I'm just so proud of everybody that's involved, you know, and what what Tom's done, you know, years ago starting making basses to, you know, the the team we have now producing instruments like this. I mean, it's just beautiful, really nice. Um, so yeah, anyone looking for a awesome big bass but super easy to play or one that makes a great five string, check out the Martin Ruggieri.